Okay. There we go. I can see it here. Just want to make sure that we're on. Yes, we are on, you guys. Okay, so I can minimize and just go through here this way. Awesome. Yes. Okay, I had to mute myself. Good Lord. <laughs> Hello, how is everyone doing today? Uh, welcome to our live um, informational session. Uh, we are glad that you have joined us on this afternoon, on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. We pray that you've had a blessed week and um, very uh, good weekend thus far amidst everything that has been going on. We know that we have uh, recently just uh, overcame a storm, a hurricane, and where our prayers are going out to all of those who um, may be um, still in the struggle of getting things uh, together as far as a home uh, front. Our uh, prayers are with you guys. Um, <clears throat> we wanted to take a time today, sometime today, uh, to come and talk about a pressing issue that is uh, going on in our state. Uh, before we do that, uh, we're going to introduce ourselves. My name is Precious Van Jury. Uh, I am the founder, along with my wonderful husband, Wilfred Van Jury, of Incarceration Speaks. Uh, he is incarcerated at Louisiana State Penitentiary, and uh, we just want to shout them out because they will be listening to the broadcast. Uh, we're going to send the broadcast to them to listen to because there are so many candidates there that are under uh, the unanimous jury uh, law that we're going to be talking about shortly. Um, and also, we want to uh, introduce our co-host of the Angel Watch Project. She's joining us today. I'm going to let her introduce herself. Uh, and her husband. Hi, my name is Inquilla Berry. As everyone know, my husband um, is incarcerated at uh, Angola State Penitentiary. Um, I'm so glad our special guest is on here today. I want everybody to come in and take notes and, and listen and, I mean, help your loved one that's incarcerated. And that's, we're here to give our information to help everyone that's in the same uh, situation that we are in. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for joining us today, uh, Ms. Barry. I tell you what, she's been my right hand, my prep partner uh, since the beginning. When I came to her about a car incarceration speaks a few years ago, and she's been sticking with me ever since. And um, it's such a pleasure to work with her and to share co-hosting with her. Amen. Uh, and last but not least, but special, the best for last, is our guest speaker for today. Uh, as you know, we called this session today a live informational session and that it is, is exactly um, what we are going to provide for you today. Uh, our guest speaker is uh, no other than Mrs. Sarah Gonzalo. And she uh, resides in New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, she is the unanimous project specialist for Promise of Initiative Justice. Uh, she works real closely with uh, attorney uh, Jamila. Shout out to Ms. Jamila, my girl, uh, who allowed us to have this platform on today. Uh, we are going to be discussing uh, the unanimous uh, jury. A decision that took place recently uh, about a year ago and she has the information on process of um, the unanimous uh, jury. They created a project behind it. They're working strongly uh, with the court system, with the families. So she is going to be able to uh, give us information on where we are and where we're going. Uh, have your paper and pen out, family. I want to introduce to some and present to others, Mrs. Sarah Gonzalo. I'll let you take it on from here, Miss Sarah. Thank you. Thank you both so much. It's such a pleasure to be here today. And I uh, just admire the work that you're doing, which I find is so needed, so important, so uplifting, so hopeful, um, and 
truly what gets all of us going is um, working with y'all. And yeah, uh, my name is Sarah and I'm one of the unanimous jury specialists. Um, I'm gonna say from the get go, I'm not an attorney. Um, so I can't, you know, speak or give any legal advice. Uh, I'm an organizer at heart. That's where my background is. Um, but I joined the Promise of Justice initiative about a year ago. Uh, I started there on September 30th of last year. And well, you know, what's very, very special about this project and that's different than any other project I've ever been a part of is that the attorneys at the Promise of Justice initiative um, had a case pending with the United States Supreme Court. It was the Ramos case, and that was gonna be heard in October. And their idea was, what happens if we win? Which, you know, sometimes when we're organizing, we only get to a point and we don't think beyond that point. But as many of you listening, if the Supreme Court gives an opinion and somebody may be able to benefit from that opinion, the person has one year to file to be able to preserve the issue. And so the Promise of Justice initiative had the foresight to say, whoa, if we win and hundreds of people could potentially be impacted by the decision that the US Supreme Court will put out, we better be ready. Yes. And so even before we had the decision, we started organizing. And what we did was we started from um, the names that the advocate, the advocate had written a very important uh, series of articles for which they won the Pulitzer Prize, in which they investigated the impact of non-unanimous juries. And I'm sure I don't need to tell you all, but I'll just say real quick, non-unanimous juries basically is when, um, you know, in Louisiana since 1898, when um, during the uh, Constitution Convention, they literally said, in order to preserve white supremacy, we are gonna pass this law by which it will be legal that only nine out of 12 jurors must say guilty in order for someone to be convicted. Right. And basically what they were doing was saying, if these laws are gonna be imposed on us where we can't have slavery, where black people are gonna be able to vote and black people are gonna be able to serve in juries, we're gonna silence their voices. And by silencing their voices, we're going to be able to send people to prison, put them to work, and for all intents and purposes, preserve slavery in our state. We're going to be able to serve in juries. We're going to silence their voices. Oh, I'm hearing an echo. Yeah, it did an echo. I'm so sorry. I just want to okay. say that we were on live and we were good. <laughs> okay. Um, so fast forward to 2018 when the residents of Louisiana organized and or you know the promise of justice initiative was one of the organizations that led that organizing to put it in the ballot and to right. say to all Louisianans we're going to vote on this do we still want non-unanimous juries and by now it had been 10 12 as opposed to the original 9 12. Yeah. But um, through the organizing of everyone, organizations, family members, people incarcerated who donated the little money that they had, who put the word out, who asked their families to get involved. It was a very, very wow. successful um, campaign that ended up with an S, you know, incredible 64% vote of yes on um, Prop 2, which basically put an end to non-unanimous juries in Louisiana. The trick was that because there had to be some negotiating, yeah. that was only going to impact people who went to trial starting for crimes that were committed after 2019, so January 1st of 2019. Everyone else 
could still be convicted by a non-unanimous jury if you had been convicted by a non-unanimous jury it didn't impact you so it only impacted us going forward basically yes, yes. and so around the same time is when the u.s supreme court decided to hear the ramos case and so what that case did and it was a case that ben cohen um presided over uh, with the help of Calvin Duncan and others, the, the US Supreme Court on April of this year said that non-unanimous juries were unconstitutional. Wow. And unfortunate, well, amazing, right? Amazing victory. Um, unfortunately, the decision only affects people whose cases are still active. So if your case is final, so you're not on the jury trial or the direct appeal with the Court of Appeals or the Louisiana Supreme Court or the US Supreme Court, unless you're at one of those stages, the Ramos decision does not impact you. And that's, this was the purpose why our project was created because we thought we cannot leave anyone behind and we will Absolutely. not leave anyone behind. And so even though this decision only impacts people whose cases are still open, we are now gonna fight for what's called retroactivity. Um, and again, I know this audience probably knows, but sometimes I get questions about retroactivity. So basically what we're fighting for now is to have the Ramos decision affect everyone who was convicted by a non-unanimous jury. Because if we're saying that non-unanimous juries are unconstitutional, right. Right. then yeah. they're also unconstitutional for everyone who is sitting in prison right now. That's right, that's right, right? absolutely, absolutely. So starting in the fall of last year, we started doing outreach. We went to um, Angola. We spoke with inmate counsel there. Um, it was my first time at Angola and that alone was an experience that has changed me forever. Um, I always say I was an abolitionist in my head. Then I went to Angola and came out an abolitionist in my heart. Um, and we sent letters and we started going to the clerks of courts in every parish in Louisiana and started looking for records that would show whether or not someone had been convicted by a non-unanimous jury. And let me tell you, mm -hmm. Louisiana has not done a great job at keeping track of who was convicted by a unanimous jury or not. Yes. And I guess because they felt this is legal, so I don't have to pay attention. There you go. That's the biggest issue. Mm -hmm. That's the yeah. biggest issue now. Yeah. So, so you can't ask a parish to tell you who was convicted by a non-unanimous jury and who was convicted by... They can't tell you. They don't know. Honestly, some of the clerks you call and they don't know what you're talking about period. You have to explain to them, this is why it's important that I get this information. Or you have to go in there already knowing what to look for. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's why we're here today as well. You know, we, the families need to know what is that paperwork. Yeah. Because if you leave it up to the clerk of court office, they're going to give you, Ms. Berry went through it too, run around run around and yeah. dumbfounded about it. it it's a it's a hard call to yeah, you know they give deal you, with they give you the run around for the paperwork and what you really need and they know you what you want really but they they'll let you pay for all this unnecessary paperwork oh, yeah. and you don't get nothing you need yeah yeah. at the very beginning i would ask for the verdict date of the jury trial and I would get the sentencing date. And I was like, I just paid you $10 for one piece of paper yeah. that could yes. you could have just faxed me for free. Right. And you're giving me the wrong thing. So I learned that when you go to the clerk of court, or when you call them on the phone, you can call them on the phone. You don't have to go there. 
to be so detailed about what you need. Right. What you're going to need when you call the clerk of court, you're going to need the name of your loved one and their docket number. So that's the case number, the case of their original jury trial. Yeah. If you don't have that, but you have their date of birth and the charges. They can, if they want to help you, they can find it. And so my first piece of advice when you go to the clerk of court is be as nice yes. as you possibly can. Right. <laughs> and and you can they hold the key. Sometimes they tell me things like the other day I just needed one number. I just, I just need no, what was the sentence for this one charge? And she wouldn't give it to me. She insisted that I had to ask her the question via fax. And then she was going to fax. Wow. That. Mm -mm. <laughs> That's horrible. I just could not understand why. But I was like, if I get so mad mm -hmm. that she hangs up the phone, I'm right. not going to get the answer. I'm not going to do what you want. <laughs> and right. so what I need to do is say, oh, of course, that's not a problem. I will fax it to you right now. And I will call you after I fax you so that you know that the fax should be there. And then I'm going to wait until you fax me back. <laughs> yeah. And oh, you were on pins and needles like, ah. but, but the whole time I'm like, oh, you know, you're like screaming inside. Right. <laughs> you know, just Absolutely. So um, or like, you know, I'll say, can you email it to me? And they'll say, well, can you come over and pick it up? And I'm thinking, you know, it's also COVID-19. You would think you're trying to avoid people going <laughs> into the there office. You go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like I said, the most important thing is to get that information. So just be nice, be holding on to something that you can squeeze real hard <laughs> while you're talking to them. Um, and also, um, I don't know if there is a place where I can write my email address, Precious. Yes, but I we, we are going to, we're recording this session. And what I do is I post it to our uh, YouTube page and I'm going to post it on to uh, uh, where all my social media outlets and we'll tag all the contact information there. Okay, great. Because yeah. You know, I, I, I also understand it's scary and people give you the runaround. So you can also call us and we will help you. If we have not already found the records for your loved one, we are happy to look with you. And I've been on the phone with people who are at the clerk of court and being like, okay, now ask them for this, 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 and that. <laughs> and yeah. Like you need to find a best friend at each courthouse. You have to. We and need everyone that. to find yeah. a best friend at all of the clerk of courts. Yeah. You gotta find that one person at, oh yeah. my God, hey. Oh exactly. My God. Hey. <laughs> That's what you need. That's what you need. Um, and the other thing okay. I want to say, because I know um, I, I want to talk about what documents that would yeah. tell you okay. whether the jury was polled and what the result of the polling was. So basically the, the polling happens several times during the trial. The jury is polled every time they leave the room and come back, the jury, the judge asks, do you want the jury polled? And for most of the times they say, no, we don't want the jury polled. We can see 12 people there. Um, what's important is after the judge gives the instructions to the jurors, the jurors go out to deliberate. Then they come back and they give their verdict. After they give their verdict, hopefully the attorney requests for the jury to be polled. It's at that moment that's important because the judge is gonna ask each juror whether or not this was their verdict. And that's yeah. the information that we need. So there are different places where this information may be. One is the minutes. The minutes from the trial is a very brief description of what happened that day. It's usually a page or two. And he talks about, like it'll say, 
the defense presented their witnesses. The witnesses were, yeah. but not detail. It's like one thing. Yeah. But sometimes it says the defense requested ju the jury to be polled. The jury was polled. The result was 11 1. That's gold. That's what we yes. need. Yes. Okay. Uh, if the minutes, sometimes the minutes, like I know in Jefferson, uh, every time is like the jury was polled, the judge recorded the jury polling and stated it was legal. And that's it. It doesn't tell you what the result of the jury polling was, which is so frustrating. Um, the next step would be the trial transcript. And that's the more detail every word that was say, said in the court is usually hundreds of pages. You don't have to go through the whole transcript. You don't have to order the whole transcript because they're going to charge you one dollar per page of that transcript. All you need is the three or four pages where the jury is polled and what the result of the polling was. Um, and so because the transcript has more details, sometimes even though the minutes don't say what the result of the jury polling was, the transcript will. Okay. Sometimes the transcript even tells you the jury was polled, but they don't tell you the result. That's still okay, don't panic. The most important thing is to know whether the jury was polled or not. If, I, if it says, that the attorney waived the jury polling mm -hmm. that because then it's possible that the jury was never polled and it's possible that we will never know who voted what if the jury was polled then it is the responsibility of the court to have kept the jury polling slips the only trick with the jury polling slips is that many times they are sealed okay. and only an attorney representing the person or a judge can unseal those documents. So yeah. I've seen many people who have written to us who put requests themselves to unseal the records and were told you don't have a right to this, even though their case depends on it. Right. The okay. truth is, an attorney representing the person or a judge are the only people who can unseal these records. Now we're doing different things and being creative in trying to unseal these jury polling slips. So okay. please let us know if you tried everything else and you know that the jury was polled and actually you remember what the jury polling was. You just don't okay. have physical proof for it. Just okay. please reach out to us let us know and we we will hopefully be able to assist you with that. That's good to know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yes, because it's, it's hard to, to get an answer. It's hard to get information. Yeah. 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 And, and you know, we have a, a system, I, I always look at it this way, I, and I would love to hear your thoughts on this where the system is designed for us to forget that there are people who are incarcerated, yes. oh, yeah. who have yes. rights, who are still protected by the constitution. And the system does everything they can for the rest of the world to just forget and to yeah. not be bothered by. But we have to fight, we have to, for every roadblock they have, we're gonna have to go through it. And we will, we will. Yeah. 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 I, yeah, I, I, I don't think that the obstacle will be to get those records. I think the bigger obstacle will be to win retroactivity, which, yes. you know, I know uh, we all are helpful in the, hope, hopeful in this call mm -hmm. and positive, but the truth is we can't guarantee it. We don't right. know what's going to happen. In November, so next month, the United States Supreme Court is going to hear the Edwards case. And that case was picked by the United States Supreme Court to decide the retroactivity of the Ramos case. So it's not like they went and said, hey, we want you to hear this case to decide 
the retroactivity of Ramos. Mm -hmm. The case was there and the US Supreme Court kind of took it and decided we're gonna use this case to decide the retroactivity of Ramos. Okay. And so that will be heard in November. Okay. And so we won't have a decision until the spring of next year. Okay. What's important to remember for everyone who's listening, who has a loved one, is that we believe you will have to file something before the one year anniversary of Ramos. And that's on April 20th of this coming year. So we still have six months. Yeah. So it's not like we're, I don't want anybody to panic and yeah. working really hard to be in communication with everyone. We're gonna let everyone who we are in communication with, we're gonna let them all know in the next two weeks where we're at with their case. Um, but I know it's hard when you're surrounded by people who maybe have received a letter or people who have received a retainer or people whose case now is already pending and to think what's happening to me. Um, we aren't forgetting anyone. It's just that the numbers are high. Yes. And we've also, you know, Jamila Johnson, I, I want to shout out Jamila one more time. Yes. Uh, not only for being a visionary and knowing that this was going to have to be uh, organized, but also because of her tireless efforts. Yeah. And I, I was joking with someone yesterday because I was like, no matter what time I text or email Jamila, she always responds. Yeah. <laughs> Whether it's late at night, it's late. early in the morning. Yeah. Just, she always responds. Always there. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's always there. Mm -hmm. um, but she has engaged in conversation with about 40 law firms all over the United States who are also taking cases, who are going to be co-counsel with the Promise of Justice initiative. And to me, that's also a beautiful thing because it has become now a national movement yeah. where people in all different states yes. are representing people in Louisiana to make sure that nobody's left behind. Yeah, awesome. And yeah. I feel like it's the beginning of a trickle down effect because 10 2 is not the only issue we're having with uh, justice and things going on uh, with legality, with court cases. It's so yeah. many other things, but I think that this was the groundbreaking start of mm -hmm. a lot of other issues that we need to have addressed and change um, yeah. for our state. Yeah. And it just makes it easier for all of our foundations that are out here advocating and, you know, letting us know that there is hope um, mm -hmm. that we can make a difference. If we just keep our voices and keep our heart pure to fight what we're fighting for, it's going to mm -hmm. make a difference. And that's how I feel about Tintu and where we are now with the process, because we've come such a long way and mm -hmm. we've waited so many years mm -hmm. to Get to this place that we are at now you know yeah. and I, i'm just ready to see the manifestation of that and i, I real i feel really good about it oh good yeah I thanks to you guys yeah <laughs> i, feel good about it too. I yeah. think we're gonna win that's what i want to believe yeah that's what i believe so i mean what 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 is for the loved ones to look forward to it like what is for us to help themselves get into into alignment to help y'all help us. So what we need to do, like, to help y'all. So, so you need to know where your loved one was convicted in which parish. Mm -hmm. That's the parish that will have all the documentation. And if we don't already have that documentation, so, you know, ask your loved one if they're in communication with us, because we are in communication with about I don't know, almost 2000 people. Okay. So first you need to make sure that they're in our system, yeah. that we know about them. Um, and you can just call our office and ask for the unanimous jury project and either myself or any of the other specialists will, will answer your call or return your call in the next few days. So the first step is to make sure they're in our system. 
then if we don't have the records for the case, if you can help get those records, because imagine I have to look for 600 people right now. Right. Whereas if you take it on, you're gonna be much faster than me. And right. also because I do believe, I wanna believe in the goodness of everyone and that at some point everybody can relate to another beating heart on the other end of the phone or in person. And I feel like family members advocating with the clerks is much more powerful and important yeah. than right. me advocating with them. Right. And I think you can be more successful, especially again, you're just gonna be the nicest person that you can possibly be. It's yeah. like a challenge. How nice can I be? <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. And then if you get the records and you're just looking for that language, the language that says the jury was polled and this was the result of the polling. It was 10, 2, 11, 1. We don't need to know who voted what. Okay. We just need to know that it wasn't 12, 0. Okay. Or if there are different charges, sometimes people were um, charged with different things. And for each charge, you get a verdict. And for each charge, the jury's polled. Right. In that case, it's super, super important that we know what then the sentence was for each charge. Okay. Because sometimes what happens is, say, I have three charges. Mm -hmm. And two of them were non-unanimous, but one of them was unanimous. Right? Okay. So for one of them, all 12 jurors said guilty. We need to know how many years that charge got okay. because if you're serving a life sentence for a unanimous charge even if your other two charges were non-unanimous that means that even if you win you still have this one charge with a life sentence so right. that doesn't mean we're not going to fight the unanimous juries but it's important information for us to know Okay. Um, whereas if it was five years for the unanimous charge and you've already served 15, that unanimous charge doesn't even matter anymore, right? right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, what the attorneys then also need always is the sentencing minutes. So if you're going to go and get the documents, we need either the minutes or the transcript pages or any information, sometimes the clerks have just told me, I see that he was convicted by a 10-2. And I say, can you put that in writing? Right. With that letterhead? Okay. Is it, I will write an affidavit saying, I got this information from this clerk of court. Yeah. And that's enough. Okay. Wow. So, that's yeah. Awesome. So if, if, you know, if, if you can't pay for the minutes or the transcript, first get in touch with us. But also you can just, you know, let's be, let's be creative. Let's not let any of the obstacles get in our way. Okay, um, yeah. But we basically need official language. And sometimes um, people have sent, for instance, mm -hmm. people have sent uh, motions that their own attorney wrote in which they, say, and my client was convicted by a non-unanimous jury. Unfortunately, because that's you saying that, we don't think that's good enough. We need something from the opposition, basically, whether it's the court, if the DA mentions it, we'll take it. Because oh. that's somebody who's against you yeah. stating that you were convicted by a non-unanimous jury. Whether it's, whereas if it's you saying it, then the court could say, well, show me that this is true because you right. telling me is not good enough for me. Right. right. And I have seen um, direct appeal opinions in which the judges say, we don't see any evidence that he got an unanimous jury. Mm -hmm. So it is important. It is important to have that proof. Um, and so anything that you can do to get it. A lot of the times people have documents, they have boxes, they have accumulated a lot of paperwork. Yes. 
I'm happy if you want to bring that paperwork to our office, I'm happy to look with you so that we can find if among all the documents, we can find that proof. If you, if you live far away, I'll try over the phone to explain to you where to look, what pages to look for, what it should look like. Um, Cause I know, you know, for a lot of our friends and, and, and people who we are trying to support, it's been decades. Right. Yeah. It's been decades. And, and, and it's not even in order. And yeah, exactly. And yeah. there's been floods and yeah. hurricanes. And somebody told me their house burnt and all the documents were there. Oh my God. And truly, you know, sometimes I joke about this, don't do this. Um, but when the clerk of court tells me, I'll call and I'll say, I need the minutes from this case. And they're like, well, that's an old case. And I'm like, yeah, that's been a lot of years. I said, well, yeah. And then they start asking you, well, what you need this for? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also they're surprised. Yes. Someone yeah. would care. Yeah. Mm -hmm and want the documents for an old case. And I kind of want to say, well, listen, if you can't find the documents because it's been so long, I guess maybe the person should come out. Right. There are no documents. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe there's something that's saying that they shouldn't be there and we can't right. find it, you know, if, it, right. if it's that much of a thing, you know? Yeah. Maybe. Of yeah. course, I never say that. <laughs> In our head, it's like, okay, Yes, I'm here for paperwork. Like they'll say, oh, well, they're not, they don't not do for a court date. Well, you know, what you need that for? It's not. Right. I know. Well, they have nothing pending. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's not yeah. what I asked. Yeah. Pending. Girl, if I hear pending one more time. Not <laughs> <laughs> the word pending. Yeah. Pending is not another word other than pending. I know. Oh my God. I know. <laughs> but I wanted to add that, uh, you know, our, our uh, program, Incarceration Speaks, you know, we're, we're just getting off the ground, uh, transferring to a public platform. So uh, those are one of the services that we do provide. We want to uh, be able to help families uh, get their paperwork. Uh, this is something we can offer. And I know that uh, me and Jamila talked about that. It would be a very big help for you and her uh, yeah. in the process rolling. So uh, I do want to let everyone know that we can also assist with that as well. And I know that mm -hmm. we may have some other foundations that are listening today and they may be able to join and do the same because it takes a village. Yeah, you know, it does. It takes a village and the more that we can come together and, and support our family and followers and, and getting what they need done, you know, that's going to make it easier for you guys to represent uh yeah. so we want to be dedicated to doing that for y'all right yeah and i also think you know if if like say orleans by the way if your loved one was convicted in orleans orleans <laughs> it's such a mess oh, <laughs> just a mess but um i also think about the first time that i called the clerk of court and you know the Ramos decision had not even come out so they were really you know weirded out by my question of what I needed but the more that person hears from loved ones from other law firms or other organizations the more it starts sinking in right and I think that one of the most important ways that we change minds is one-on-one -on -one. so I always hope that you know, the clerks are thinking, wow, so all these people that are coming to get records, all these people were convicted by non-unanimous juries and start seeing a little bit, you know, like you said, this is just one issue. But if one issue went so wrong, if one issue was so racist and if one issue was so unjust, what does that tell you about the whole system? Yes. Right? So so you're lot. Yeah. I'll tell you what, 2020 has taken the mask off so many things. Oh my gosh, yeah. Going on in this country. And a lot of it, even though our courts are trying to do like, I feel like our court systems here are doing this. Mm -hmm. You're right. They see, but they don't want to see. But Absolutely. They see. 
and they're going to have to, God is going to cause them to have to. Yeah, I agree. You I know. think that 2020 has been such a tough year and a painful year, but maybe that pain and that hurt was necessary, like you said, to finally take the masks off yes. and at least say, okay, so this is where we're at. Right. Right. Because before we were maybe pretending or trying to pretend yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that things That's weren't the way, the way they are, but now it's like, there's no denying it. So at That's least, right. even though we haven't really solved much, right. we at least can't pretend that there isn't a huge huge problem right right yeah. and and what i'm looking forward to see is all these families be reunited yeah. so right so many people have spent so many years lost so much you yeah. know contact and lost out on children growing up and parents yeah. getting old it's yeah. heartbreaking it is you know um the amount of I, I, it, it makes you you know teary because yeah. You know, they didn't deserve that. Mm -mm. Nobody deserves that. They didn't right? deserve that, you know. Yeah. So, but thank God for angels. And you, Miss Sarah, are an angel. Miss Barry, you're an angel, you know, and there's many more angels. And, mm -hmm. and I feel like God is going to give us our season. And mm -hmm. so, yes, he yeah. is. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the other thing that, uh, and I don't know if y'all do this already, but um, I also have a, a background in um, filmmaking, like m mostly documentary style. And one of the things that I have started wanting to do, though, you know, it's always in the back of my mind because there's so much work, but I think it's important. And, you know, I would love to talk to you maybe um, at a different date, but yeah, we need to start recording the stories. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. We need to start showing that when somebody goes to prison, a whole family, a whole community goes to prison. Yes. And that every life that's impacted by a system that just punishes, that lacks any compassion, that lacks any foresight, like there's no investment at the beginning of the problem. It's all at the end and it's all punishment, punishment, punishment. There's nothing else. They have nothing else to offer. No, right? and, You know, and in between, there's, like you said, so much pain, children, mm -hmm. parents, grandparents, sisters, and, brothers. And when you go to the facilities to, to because you have to stay a family unit. And, and that's what the uh, Angel Ops Project was developed for, to give women a voice, mothers a voice, spouses a voice, and let people know what we're dealing with and what the issues are, you yeah. know? And when we go to visit, because that's one of the criteria that keeps our family together, sometimes the only thing, mm -hmm. you know, they treat us as if we are incarcerated too. Yeah. So yeah. you can't be in this environment and, and on this journey and not feel like you're incarcerated to at a point. Right. So, right. And more people need to hear about that. Yeah. You're absolutely right about that. Yeah. And I just think we're talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. And I just think that um, because the end point is to put away and forget, mm -hmm. if people are exposed to the stories of family members, if people are told that it's not just that we have however many thousand, however hundreds of thousands of people in prison, is multiply that times. Their family members, their loved ones. Like I had someone say to me on the other phone, I want to meet my dad again. Mm -hmm. Now it's just, it just crushes you. It does. It crushes me. I'm thinking Oof. anybody who hears that would be crushed. Yeah. But the problem is people don't have to hear it yeah. unless you're directly impacted by it. Yeah. Right. yeah. And so your stories, I want to talk to both of you with a camera and get <laughs> both your stories. Yeah. We'll, and we're willing to do that. <laughs> we're willing to do it. Anytime you're ready, we're ready. No, oh, my husband's probably like, oh, I, I just want to be heard. I, you know. Like <laughs> 
all you talk about is his his voice. We don't have a voice. You are my voice. So I am, you know, yeah. Can you imagine feeling like you have no voice? Right. Yeah. yeah. That's terrible. Yeah. And thank God for you guys and for yeah. your work and your organizing and your, you know, relentless fight for justice. Yeah. You can never give up. Yeah, can. Amen. Amen. And well, I she, can imagine she, some days is harder than others. Yes, yes. Uh, Ms. Barry was sharing uh, that on our last project and gave a lot of inspiration to the women about staying strong and mm -hmm. how important that is, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we want to do. We want to provide a platform, Ms. Sarah, to invite other women to know, you know, it, it's a it's a fight, but don't give up. Stand for your child, stand for your spouse, stand for your nephew, niece. Yeah. You know, it, it's gonna make a difference. It's already gonna, it's already making a difference. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We may have a few questions, Miss Sarah. Ms. Uh, Barry, is there some questions in the uh, uh let me check. Okay, we may have a few. We have a uh, want to thank everybody for watching. This is I know that you guys are enjoying it and you're getting some good information. Uh, talking with Miss Sarah and Miss Barry today, we just appreciate you your support and I hope that you have been taking notes. But you'll be able to view it again uh, on YouTube at We Are Incarceration Speaks. I'm gonna uh, post it there um, and also Miss Sarah's email. Yes, uh, and Miss Barry's information as well, uh, so we can put you up to speed on today if you have a family member that couldn't view or if you want to watch it again yourself. So we have any questions, uh, Ms. Barry? No, I don't see any. Okay. It's too beautiful outside. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it is. I want a barbecue, but I'm too tired. <laughs> it's, but it's so beautiful. Maybe I can go to somebody else's barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful weather. Let's see. So uh, you reading the comments, Miss Barry? Yeah. Okay. They just read very, very informational. They excited about the show, a lot of them. Awesome. So, awesome. We just want to be able to be available to anybody. If anybody has a question uh, before we uh, go, because Miss Sarah is on the move. She yeah, and she's you know, working on right was, now. I was telling Miss Precious that, you know, we're all getting together tomorrow to stuff about 1,200 envelopes. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot of envelopes. It makes That's me very a lot. <laughs> But when they're going to get that envelope, it is going to put a smile on their face. I hope so. Because it lets them know. You know what I learned? That any any type of mail from court system, foundation, anything to say it's for my case, they could be having a worse day. It's going to, it, even if it's something they don't want to hear, getting a letter in some form that pertains to that case, you know, it makes them feel like somebody is still caring about what I'm dealing with. Yeah. I have a question. Okay. This, I can't say her first name, but her last name, William. Miss Williams says, if the Supreme Court doesn't rule in favor, mm -hmm. then what's next? Yeah, good question. Um, so we don't know what the Supreme Court is going to do in regards to Edwards and whether or not the Supreme Court will grant retroactivity. It is our plan to fight for retroactivity at every level. So in the state of Louisiana, in all the courts, at the parish, Court of Appeals, Louisiana Supreme Court, but also, um, you know, policy changes. So it is important to always be involved. And I'm not personally, my, my work doesn't deal with um, the policy aspects of it, but I know that they're organizing to do different things, so, you know, to, cause we could change it at that level, right? We don't need the courts to change it. I actually, I've always been trained to believe that the courts will not bring the change that we need. We need to bring the change that we need. 
Um, so we are hoping that we will get a good opinion from Edwards, but even if we don't, and this was a er question I asked um, attorney Ben Cohen before we, ha we had the decision on Ramos, I said, what if we lose? He said, but that's okay. We still don't give up. Amen. So we just, we don't have an option, right? We don't have an option to give up. So we're hopeful and we're going to fight at different, um, different places and, 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 and fight to the very last thing that we can do to not leave anyone behind. Awesome. 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 I have another question from Ms. Hayes. She said, can you explain again who the Ramos case victory mm -hmm. affects now? Mm -hmm. So anybody who, whose case is not final. So when I go to trial, I have the right to trial. Mm -hmm. Then I have to, the right to appeal that decision then I can go to the Louisiana Supreme Court, and then I can go to the US Supreme Court. Once I have gone through all of those avenues and my conviction has been affirmed, then my case becomes final. And that's when you start your post-conviction relief process. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the people, everyone that we are supporting is in post-conviction relief. If you have a loved one who is still on direct appeal, whether it's with the Court of Appeals or the Louisiana Supreme Court of Appeals or the US um, Supreme Court, if they're still on that first direct appeal from the jury and their, and their case did not become final, mm -hmm. they will be impacted by Ramos. But if your loved one already went through that and the case became final and they're in post-conviction, then they will need retroactivity. Oh, okay. Okay. I hope she that makes sense. Another question. She says, what is that? Is that, she say, what is someone, if they're supplying for clemency now, if they're applying for? Uh huh. What is? We can, yeah. So that's going to be a case by case. Because um, I understand, you know, the conflict when you're applying for clemency at the same time. Mm -hmm. But we have had, um, we have, we can talk about the details. And again, I cannot give any legal advice. One, because I'm not an attorney, but also I don't know the case at all. But um, it's good to let us know if you're up for clemency or up for parole or anything like that. It's just good to know so that we can be strategic. But it doesn't mean that you can't fight for it. Right, right, yeah. right. They would just have to do the process, you know, wait for the retroactive as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Awesome. 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 Any other questions um, we have? That's it. On the question. That's it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Those were very good questions. I, did, yes. I meant to talk about all those things and didn't. So I'm glad that the questions were asked. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And we, we, we're right on time, man. This is good. Yeah. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> we want to thank you so very much, Miss Sarah. Uh, thank you. This has been out. such a pleasure. I want to be back out. when you're talking to other people, but I just want to sit and listen. <laughs> yes, yes. We have our Angel Wives project uh, coming up at the end of the month. It's going to be episode four. And uh, we may uh, get you back in, or if you yeah, want to just join in and we'll listen. Just be a part of supporting you in any way. Yeah, Please. oh, you guys are a blessing, truly yes. a blessing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, and I may send some um, women your way, if that's OK with you all. Oh, that's yes. awesome. Send them over. Send them yeah. over. We're we going to welcome them with open arms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, we're going to ask uh, the wonderful Ms. Barry um, to give our listeners and, and our women out there just a few words of encouragement. We like to leave our forums with uh, encouragement and positivity in any way that God will let, allow her to do that. And uh, we're going to say goodbye to you guys after. Okay. I would like to encourage all special uh, everyone who's fighting uh, for the for, for the the sake of their loved ones to keep fighting. Don't forget, like they want you to forget about your loved ones, but do not 
leave no one behind. Those men and women are counting on you. I mean, I know we have busy lives, but you have to take the time to reach back, help those who are incarcerated in prison. I mean, they're still human and, and they love by God. So you have to put yourself in those shoes sometime and think back if if you was there, you know, you would want somebody to help you. So just, you know, reach a hand to those. If you know somebody, anybody that's incarcerated, but you, you have a friend of a friend that knows, ask them, do they need help? Or send some encouraging words to them that is going through because this is not an easy job. Mm -hmm. uh, fighting for someone's freedom. I mean, you might not deal with it right now, but God forbid if you have to deal with it in the future, but you it's- may start the conversation now. I would hope for y'all to, you know, just be a help to us, all organizations. I, yes. you know, welcome you to be, to come together. We're fighting for the same thing. Let's be on one accord and show love and, and do this together. Amen. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank we you think, yes, yes. She always has the best, best inspiration and we, we just love her. You know, it's, we just need more people in the world. And that's, she has a beautiful smile to go with that. It does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's good to surround yourself with people that believe in, believe in you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, when the incarceration speak started uh, years ago, I, she was one of the first persons I went to about it. And she believed in it. And, and there were times where we had just weren't working on things and I would run into her and she was like, you know, are you still doing that? And, mm -hmm. you know, so that let me know that uh, she believed in me and you can't find that often, a person that just believes in what you're doing. It's like the way Ms. Jamila feels about you. <laughs> same thing, same thing. Yeah. So uh, we want to thank everyone for joining us today. I hope you got some good information. Uh, we are recording this session, so you will be able to view it again on our YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to also share highlights on Facebook and Instagram. I'm going to attach uh, Ms. Sarah's information and Ms. Barry's information to all video proceeds. Uh, and until next time, uh, my husband and I, uh, thank you for viewing our informational session today. And we hope that you have a great weekend and keep fighting. Until next time. Bye. 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 <laughs>